Welcome to the podcast number two. I'm Josh. I'm Mason. Mason's here with us. We're going to get right into it. Uh, yeah, podcast number two. Excited. Tim's back on the show. Here I am. There it is. There it is. A little product placement. Sounded good. The old snap. Tim likes it in the can. No big deal. Snap chilled in the can. Snap chilled. Good dude's coffee in the can. I'm drinking a cup of good dude's coffee and he's drinking a cup of can, or he's drinking a can of good dude's coffee. Mm. <clears throat> That's real nice. What do you think of the canned stuff? Let's just get right into it. Yeah, it's pretty good, man. I mean, it's not as good as like a nice warm cup of coffee. Are you a hot or cold coffee guy? That's a that's the great question. I like these are great for <laughs> afternoon coffees when I'm working. Mm. So I just throw it in the old thermos, <laughs> throw it in the old lunch pail. That's right. And uh, yeah, it's just easy. Yeah, I, I'm though. not a cold coffee guy at all. But when we decided to launch that, I was really happy with how. It turned out because I actually opened it and took a sip and I would drink it. And I'm not a cold coffee guy. I think that uh, what Elemental Beverage Company does, how they brew it hot and then they snap chill it and then they put it in the can, it it keeps the flavor in there. So you get, I feel like cold coffee, it's the way that it's brewed is typically a lot slower. And so that you're going to, you're going to get a little bit more bitterness to your coffee. Um, so the way that they do it, man, it really has a, a good flavor to it. Yeah, it's good. It's good stuff. Damn right it is. Put it on the rocks. <laughs> <laughs> Water it down as much as possible. <clears throat> so we, I asked Instagram, my Instagram following, some questions so that we could have some questions for this podcast. Yeah. Yep. Because you're pretty boring. So I just want to talk about uh, the Bulls thing, but we can get to that. Oh, the Bulls documentary. Yeah, yeah we'll talk about that. Yeah, yeah for sure. I, I'm in heaven. Every sports fanatic in the world probably is too. So we need something. Let's just get right to these questions. I'm just going to uh, go through as many of these as I can. Um, if I can get my, of course, my Instagram is never working whenever I've tried to do this. I've tried to do it a couple of times. And uh, we just never get, seems to want, never wants to work for me. You tried to take it off your Wi Fi out here? I did, yeah. Yeah, I have it up the Wi-Fi right now. But that, yeah, that's typically what makes, messes it up. Here we go. There we go. First question. Look who it is. Matt Frazier. <laughs> who would have thought? <laughs> so question is, Aram, I, I think it's pronounced Aram or Flair. And so great question. These are basically those two espresso machines, portable espresso machines that I've showed you. Right, right. right? And so Aram is the one that he's, told me to get I bought it and then Flair I actually reached out to them and they sent it to me and so and I'm not saying this because Flair sent it to me and I actually purchased the arm I, I'm very being completely 100% non-biased here the I actually preferred the Flair I've only taken one shot of, shot out of each though the cool thing about the Flair is you can actually see the pressure at which you're pouring your shot at because you want about nine bars of pressure when you're doing it and the arm it's the arm is e easier it's more compact it's definitely easily to, easier to travel with yeah so to be clear these are like small espresso on the goes on yeah exactly this, this isn't like this, a big ass espresso no this is machine. not an espresso machine yeah. you, for your d kitchen but you definitely could use either of them if you didn't want to pay the you know five two to five grand that you're really going to need to spend to get a good espresso machine at, on your for your kitchen so these are really nice espresso they make a pretty solid espresso even if you just you know say you just want to have an espresso at home and you don't want to spend that five thousand dollars or two thousand dollars or whatever it is these are good for that or they're also good for traveling so the arm again it's it almost the arm almost looks like a hand grinder and you you know you put it in there you put your grounds in and then but the, you need to have ground beans with you you'd, you'd have to have a grinder with you yes and then the for either or ground beans with you. Yes. You get hot water somewhere. Yeah, hot water, right. Hot water is not a tough thing to come by. But anyways, so for me, it's the flare. I think that the I pulled a better, I only have done, like I said, I've only done one shot out of each. And the flare had a better, had more flavor to it, had, had more body to it. Like it was like, it had that creamy espresso flavor that I like. So the arm was a little flat, a little watery. It tasted a little more rundown. Again, I need to adjust, probably it could have been operator air. 
um, they both did a good, gir- uh, they both were good enough. But uh, for me, the that's all I need. Right. Yeah. <laughs> for me, it was the flair. I just, uh, I like the way it tasted better. So you got a little flair to you. So I got, I got nine pieces of flair. I don't, sense. I weigh more than the minimum. <laughs> uh, next question. <laughs> oh, geez. Some of these questions are good. What is your non working hand doing while your working hand is wiping your butt? <laughs> Oh, interesting enough. I've actually switched hands a couple times. Okay. Right? So when I, I'm naturally a righty, uh, and uh, I was probably in my late teens when I was like, you know what? I shouldn't wipe with my right hand because I do everything with that. <laughs> so I made a conscious effort to switch to lefty. Nice. Yeah. And then, um, so I've been doing that for years. And then uh, I uh, recently, after I got married— Right, I have like a decent ring, not this one. This is the yeah workout ring, but I got a decent ring, right? Yeah. So I'm wiping lefty with like a good ring on, and I'm like, man, I feel like I should switch back to righty, <laughs> <laughs> just in case, you know. I think it's a good idea. So I switch back for a little bit, but you know, yeah. I go back and forth. It's awkward. It's a it's a, not an easy transition. And to be honest, I, I don't even I can't even tell you what my non-working hand's doing. I think it's just on my. Leg. Probably. Right? I don't know. <laughs> Great question, Michael Dalton. That's Michael Dalton. He's actually uh, one of the media guys for CrossFit. <laughs> Solid question. All right, let's get into a little, maybe some more serious questions. Uh, when you were... Uh, when you were active duty and training, did fatigue hurt your results? I'm assuming this is from CrossFit Daryl. Can I see those? Yeah. Okay. I'll try to um, some of the good ones. Right yeah. So I'm assuming what you mean is for competition. Um, so for me, I, I I don't know if I'd say it hurt it hurt my results. It definitely ha- it played a part in how I recovered. Um, you know, I don't remember ever thinking like, oh man, like I'm, you know, I'm this is, this is too hard. But I also like when I was doing that, that's what most people were doing. Most people during that time were still having to have full-time jobs and train all the time. So it wasn't just me having a job and still having to train. Like that's, that was the time where CrossFit, you, oh, right. the money, the money wasn't there to where most people could be full-time athletes. It just wasn't doable unless you were young, really young and you were still almost in college or something where you know, those, those guys still had to, or g- girls had to do homework and be in class all day. So, um, you know, th- I don't think that it really did. I think that was just the nature of the beast at the time. Um, could it have been better? Of course. I think that if you, anytime you can be a full-time athlete, you're going to have better results, right? Because now your job is to focus on training, recovery, nutrition, all that, where when you have a, another job, right, that takes up a lot of your time and you just have to, kind of make do with what with the extra time to get your training and nutrition and recovery in. So there's just not as many hours in a day to devote towards something. So um, you know, but I don't think it 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 hurt it. It just there's just a different mindset there. And that's what I had to have. And I think that's what every a lot of athletes had to have back then. Um so in the end it was it was awesome. I loved that time of my life. It was great. It was hard. It was it was challenging, but there wasn't anything else I would have been doing anyways besides wasting my time with something stupid. Good question, though. Um, I think that's a good one. The uh, What inspired you to have a home gym? Nice. Tristan Randall 4. What inspired you to build the home gym? For me, it was 100% from the go, I wanted a nice home gym. Like, I always wanted that. I always wanted to have everything at my house so that I didn't have to rely on going to a gym so that if I needed to get more work in and I couldn't go somewhere or a gym was closed and rely, I didn't want to rely on a gym's time or a gym, you know, a gym schedule. And so I always wanted to have a home gym. So from the get go, I mean, when I first started doing CrossFit, I went to like three different gyms. Actually, there were no gy- I started doing CrossFit in January, 2005. There were no CrossFit gyms in St. <laughs> Louis, Missouri when I started doing it. And so we did it at, me and a buddy, we would do CrossFit at, um, what was the name of the college? 
man, I'm drawing a blank on the college. It was in Missouri. It was, uh, I want to say Webster, but that's not right. <clears throat> Anyways, it doesn't matter. We went to a college's gym and we they had an Olympic weightlifting area that had, so had a barbell, had bumper plates, had pull-up bars in that area, had dumbbells. And we did our, and I, I would bring my set of rings or and my wall ball that I always had in so when we when we when we needed that stuff, we had, we had it. Yeah, had it <laughs> exactly. And so I would bring that stuff with me, and that's where I I got it. But it, it just it, I hated having to rely on a gym's schedule, right? I wanted to be able to do my workouts when I needed to do them. So when I first got into CrossFit, I got a barbell, some bumper plates. Where when you actually called high temp and you said that you did CrossFit, you got a discount. Like that's. How long ago? Yeah. <laughs> but it was from the get-go. I wanted I wanted my own stuff. Those plates over there? No, they're the not. The bottom here. ones? No, no, no. No, no they're high temp. So, so the, the old, oh, okay. the old, um, yep. you know which one? They look yeah. like, they have that like, almost, like compressed rubber. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like a tire kind of. Yeah, 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 exactly. So, but yeah, back in, back in 2005, if you called them and you said you did CrossFit, they gave you a discount. Now they're like, yeah, of course. Yeah, you say that, they're going to laugh at you. <laughs> Congratulations. <laughs> yeah, way to go. Yeah. <laughs> Good no, job. No, you don't. <laughs> yeah, I don't, I don't believe you. <laughs> <clears throat> so I, I did that. I got a, I got a set of rings from this place. I can't remember that it was like it was the old red strap and white metal rings. Oh, and yeah. then I got a wall ball. And uh, you still got that ball? I think that that I, actually that wall ball. I believe that black and gray one is that the wall egg? ball. No, that one's pretty good still. It's just a oh, twenty okay. pounder. It still works. Oh, that the thirty yeah, pounders. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The thirty pounders are always they're hit and miss sometimes. Mm -hmm. Or they're odd shaped. So yeah, for me again. It was from the get-go. And so once I, I just pieced it together over the years, uh, obviously having Rogue as a sponsor has been huge and fantastic and being able to build out my gym now for, you know, two people to always be able to do everything that we need to do, if not more. Yeah. I think like home gyms, it's like something, because I, I've got a lot of stuff at my place now and it's just like, you just got to slowly acquire it. Yeah. You know, you start out with barbell and some plates and then maybe you get a machine or a rower and something. And then like, you know, every now and then <clears throat> go spend a hundred bucks on a pair of dumbbells. Yeah. And then before you know it, you're like, now I'm buying stupid shit. Like right. I got a weight tree for yeah. Christmas. Yeah, exactly. You know, right. like, right. but yeah, you get, you know, you get some sort of squat rack where you can typically, yeah. you know, like a yoke is a, a yoke is a perfect example. You can use it as so many different things. It's so versatile, right? A sled, a pull-up bar, um, a squat rack, a bench, uh, you know, it's, it's just, uh, you can carry it as a yoke. So there's a lot of things you can do with a yoke that's so versatile. So when you, you, when you don't have a lot of room and a lot of money, you got to find the most versatile pieces of equipment, right? And so I think yoke, a barbell, some plates, a sandbag, I think is a phenomenal yeah. tool as well. You can do so yeah. many different things with that. Exactly. Like you said, dumbbells here, like, you know, just, just piece those dumbbells, get the, get the, you know, the, the 55s, the 85s, the hundreds, like those would be my first three go-to. Like at my at my mom's house, yeah. I have a, a small gym in, in the basement as well. So when I'm there, I don't have to rely on, again, another gym. And you really only need 100. And exactly. So yeah, yeah. you only need one 100 if, unless you want to do some bench with it or something. Yeah. But um, at there, I only have three sets. I have 55s, yeah. 85s, and 100s. Yep. Uh, you know, so, and then exactly once you can get, you know, <laughs> more right now <laughs> that's a good one uh, but anyways yeah so piece it together get your essentials first and then you know start to slowly build but it's nice to not ever have to rely on someone else's schedule when you when you work out yeah next question What was your job in the SEAL teams? Um, you know, I was a new guy. So you get new guy duties right off the bat, which is just the fun. the fun part. Yeah. Um, so I was a uh, a heavy gunner, uh, Mark 48. Um, so for my first platoon, but I was also a breacher. Um, so it, it was pretty much breacher. And then, What's that? What's a breacher? So a breacher, if you don't know, is the guy that gets opens the door. Right. He's the guy who gets you, it, or basically, he's a he's the guy who finds out how to make entry into open doors. Any, yeah, either open doors or 
put holes in walls or whatever, however you need to get into whatever it is you're trying to get into. So, so is that um, explosives as well? Yes, explosive, mechanical, manual. Um, we use torches, uh, quickie saws, chainsaws, sledgehammers, you know, whatever, whatever tool you can think of. Or, you know, firefighters were a big part of how we learned a lot of our stuff. Uh, using our, our tools. And so it was a really awesome job, really fun job. I loved it. It was very like, it was like man camp, you know. You oh, went, yeah. be, breaching school was probably one of the most fun schools. Well, it's not like you got to be delicate. Exactly. You know? you, like you literally break things. Yeah. And that's it. I was, and it's not yours. There's only, yeah, I think there's only, <laughs> yeah. there was only one, and there was endless supply of doors too. So like, ah, you know. And they would, like, these instructors would make the most cr- the crazy barricades. And you'd have to go through, and you'd go through, like, three chainsaw blades because, you know, you they'd put some sort of… Nails s- and some shit in there. Something in there, yeah, like, to cause your chain to break. And, you know, then you'd pop out your quickie saw, and, you, you know, you're just constantly working on these doors. It was just so much fun. And then taking a sledge. Who doesn't like sledging the door? The, actually, the only non-fun part is when you're technically the breacher, you're telling someone else what to do and where to do it. Okay. So you're instructing them. And so um, being the guy that actually gets to hit the door, that's the fun part. No uh, chainsaw accidents, though? No, thank goodness. There's some close calls, though. <laughs> I remember my, my uncle one time, he uh, he was cutting some logs down in our backyard. And he's like, his wife, my auntie Kim, he's like, Hey, Kimmy, start up the car. I got some meat hanging. <laughs> <laughs> you look at his shin, and he's just got like just a hunk of skin just oh. hanging off his shin. <laughs> like, Solid. Oh yeah, that's gonna happen though. That I mean, if you you, work, you play with those tools long oh, enough, yeah. something's gonna happen. They cut. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> right. They cut through metal and steel. Yep. <laughs> They're gonna cut through your skin. I mean, maybe not mine, but. <laughs> <laughs> What about uh? I got some good ones for you. Yeah. What um? What's your your favorite uh regional workout? Oh, that was I've seen that. that, that yeah. One. Favorite regional workout. Regional workouts are tough. There's been a lot of them, and <clears throat> just trying to think going back, like games games workouts. I feel like are a little more. Where would you get to that? Yeah, those are, yeah, yeah, right, exactly. We'll ask that question. Uh, regional workout. <clears throat> I, I really like the chipper workouts. I thought those were always really fun. Um, one that stands out is the hundreds workout where you did, oh, right. I want to say it was 100 wall ball, 100 pull up, 100 pistols, and then 100 dumbbell snatches. Mm-hmm. I don't remember what year that was. Is I it think, pull up or chest of bars? I think it was just pull ups. I believe it was okay. because <clears throat> I remember Dave Lipson was in San Diego at the time and he was training. He went to regionals that year. So mm-hmm. if you don't know who Dave Lipson is, Dave Lipson is uh, Camille LeBlanc Blazinet's husband. And he's, he's, he's so big. He's <laughs> yeah. such a big guy. And, but he was into CrossFit and he got, and he, and he made regionals a few years. I don't remember how many times. Um, but he, I remember when we, we practiced that workout together and he's like, I think I'm going to do all of my pull-ups and singles. And I was I was blown away. Like, what are you talking about? You know, that was just the time where. Was he not kipping or something? No, he was. He was just a big guy and he thought that that was going to be faster than if he like tried to link them together. I don't and, think it was. No, I'm sure it wasn't. <laughs> uh, but it was so funny because that year, so Dave, <clears throat> he actually did pretty decent that year. I don't remember what he placed, but it wasn't terrible. It was better than I thought he would do. But he was basically doing this whole like, Take first in a work or take first or second in a workout, take dead last in a workout. Right. Take first or second in a workout, take dead last in a workout. You know, like yeah. he was just he was just that type of athlete. I might where, do this one, yeah. Yeah, wow. he was just that type of athlete where he he had things that he was really good at and then he had things that he was really, really bad at. And he knew it. <laughs> and so he was okay with it. <laughs> yeah. And so that weekend I remember I was remember how bad my low back hurt because we also had the 2115 9. <laughs> 315 dead 30 inch box jump workout. And I want to say that was right before or right after 
that hundreds workout where we had a hundred, you know, a hundred pistols yeah. into a hundred dumbbell Dumbos. snatches, which at the time, and I know it was only, I think it was only a 70 pound dumbbell, I think okay. for men. But at the time, like that was- yeah, It was a hundred in a row. But it was exactly, it was a hundred right yeah. after the pistols. And so everyone's low back, everyone's posterior chain fried. was fried. And he's like, my back doesn't hurt that bad. And it's because during that, the hundreds workout, he did those singles on the pull-ups and he only did like 20, 20 snatches. He only got oh. to like 20 snatches. So he didn't do- I feel nice and fresh. That's what I was, yeah, I was like, right. of course you do, I feel Dave. great. So that was pretty funny. He's I thought like, that, hey, that you shouldn't have moved so fast on that one. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> you wouldn't feel so mad either. Yeah. That was uh, that was good, you know. A, another really fun one that I remember was the very first. My first regionals was my only regional that wasn't at Del Mar. Um, Where was it? It was in Long Long Beach, uh, Long Beach University, okay. and so it was out on a track on their track. It must and have been like eleven or something. It was eleven. Yeah, yeah. twenty eleven was my first regional, and the very first workout it was a thousand meter run on the track, thirty handstand push ups into a 1K row. Oh. And so it was a really fun workout. And I remember getting, I think I was the second person to the wall, first person to the rower. And people were just like, the way people rode back then How was, far is the rower? Was just 1K. So it was like a- I mean, that's pretty- It was like a 10 minute workout-ish. I can't remember my time or anything like yeah. that, but something like, something like that. And I just remember people getting to the rower and like literally stop rowing. Halfway oh, yeah. through, and so you're like, "What are you doing?" Yeah. That that'd be literally like stop walk, like yeah. stop walking. <laughs> yeah, you know. Like, and uh, it was really funny. That was a good time, though. I enjoyed those old old times. It was just like no one really knew any anyone. Yeah, it must have been interesting in the was, infancy of the sport. Yeah, you know, it was cool. It was really fun. Was nah, I'm gonna stop and drink some water. <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah, yeah. Eh, take a sip here. This, yeah. this row is a race. Big deal. You know, this is a big deal. <laughs> Like no one was sponsored like by anyone minutes, yet, really. You know? Yeah. Like, why would you have to take a break in ten minutes? You know, or a one k row, or one k. <laughs> <laughs> Give me a second here. Yeah, hold on, guys. Let me get. Let me take a break. Those are some yeah. of my uh, favorites that I can remember. What do you say to people who hate on CrossFit? What do you say to people who hate on CrossFit? There's a lot of them. Yeah, the thing is that people, there's going to be people who hate on everything. Oh, yeah. So there isn't, it's not like it's something new. Like, oh, people hate CrossFit. No, people hate everything. There's like, there's always someone out there who's going to be a naysayer about anything. And so you don't say anything to them. You move on, you yeah. know, like you just. Or do a Castro does and yeah. screenshot it. Yeah, right. And then yeah. post it on social media. Exactly. So like know the guy's name. I, I don't see how you can hate on someone who's for doing something that's going to make them better. So it is what it is. Like, I, like if you are doing something in the fitness realm with your life, who cares if it's bodybuilding, if it's powerlifting, if it's strongman, if it's CrossFit, if it's just running, if it's like, you know, I like to do triathlons. Awesome. Great for you. Great. Do what you want to do. It's your life. So you're always going to have people who hate on you. You, you got to move past it. You got to let it go. Let those people be miserable because typically people who have to hate on other things are miserable and they're just, they want to bring other people down because they're not happy with who they are, where they're at. Most of the people that I've seen that hate on it are in that great of shape. Exactly. You know, so it's yeah, what it is. I don't know. It is what it is. I think a lot too, like a lot of like certain parts of the fitness industry will, because they'll look at some CrossFit workouts and movements that maybe you'd think don't have like a good risk to reward ratio, you know? Yeah as far as like injuring your body versus how fit it's getting you. You know, I think a lot of that hate comes from that. Right. Um, but I mean, like there are, there are things in CrossFit that like it, they, they don't help themselves. There's, there's, a, you know what I mean? Yeah. But I, th and I think every, a lot of sports have certain things like that, right. Where people are going to disagree with CrossFit's not going to make everyone happy. No. You know, that's, no. that's just not going to happen. And they do a damn good job with what they have. Um, you know, they built a, they built a function, a fitness regiment that makes you functionally fit that because of the nature of it, it became competitive and they turned yeah. it into a sport. Yeah. You know, it's, it's very, it's, I mean, it's only the sport started in 2007, right? This is the 12th games this year. In 2020, if it, and if it happens, we don't even know if it's yeah. going to happen or not. So, 
you know, it's still so early. Um, and there's people, we're just, they're, they're still trying to figure everything out as, as everyone is. So it is what it is. It's, you're going to have haters. It's let them hate, let them go be miserable. You go be fit and move on. There you go. There it is. <laughs> Done. Next question. Just let me know who these haters are. Yeah, just live with sin in my way. <laughs> yeah, right. Were you a sporty kid or have you played many sports before sporty. starting kid CrossFit? You're pretty sporty. Like are you, like Spice Girl sporty? Like sporty, hey, like your sporty words. spice? Your words. Sporty spice? That's uh what's his name's wife, isn't it? Uh Beckham. Well, his oh, she was that's not he she wasn't sporty spice. She wasn't? She was posh spice, I believe. <laughs> I'm about to find that one out. <laughs> Um, I was a go, go ahead, I, 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 I was a sporty kid. Yes, I played I played sports my entire life. It's all I did. Uh, growing up, we played sports, whether it was for a organized team or if it was just in the street in the backyard. That's all we did. Uh, I'll, me and my brother, we played. We, I played a lot of baseball growing up. That was actually what I wanted to do when I was a kid. I wanted to be a major league baseball player. Um, I wrestled. I played soccer. I played rugby. I ran cross country for a year just to stay in shape for wrestling. Really, really miserable. Um, rugby was really fun. That was actually towards the back end of high school. And, and uh, after college, I played on a men's league. Um, we played football. We played basketball. We, you know, played hockey, roller hockey in the, in the courts. You know, we played every sport. If We played tennis, a bunch of tennis. I mean, it was just... I, golf. I've been golfing since I was about eight, Obviously, seven, eight. Like <laughs> Obviously, you're not a bull. Uh, golf since I was like eight, seven, eight years old. I love it. I mean, I, yes, all the sports. And I, I wholeheartedly think all kids should be well rounded athletes. And I think when you start to specialize at a really young age, it's really tough on kids and it can cause more harm than good a lot of times where you'll get overuse injuries and stuff like that. So for me, I was really thankful that we like to play all the sports and we didn't just get pushed into one sport. I'm trying to do that with my kids. JP plays all the sports. He, he does. <laughs> He's <laughs> great. A buddy of, of ours, of buddy, yeah, buddy of ours, JP, I remember asking when he, one of his first times coming over, I'm like, hey man, what, you used to play some sports when you grew up? He's like, yeah, I played all the sports. Yeah. And then we're like, what sports? And he's like, all of them. Yeah. And then, and then that was it. Were you on like a team or anything? No. Oh, no. No, no. I just, just played all the sports. <laughs> God, cool, JP. God bless you, JP. Right, <laughs> um, so if you could be a stud athlete, money, not an option. Like, don't worry about your pay, right? Don't worry about getting injured. What sport would it be? If you were like the Michael Jordan of… I, I think it would be baseball for me. You think like that I would just, be the coolest thing to be? What position? I don't know if it would be the coolest. It would be the one that I would probably enjoy the most. Ah! Man, if, if money wasn't an option, you're taking money off the table? Yeah, like, obviously, there's some that get better salaries than others. Yeah, yeah, probably baseball. Baseball or golf. You don't think you'd want to be, like, if you if you and your and your body was a, <laughs> like, stud basketball player? <laughs> <laughs> or, like, yeah, or Muggsy the fastest— Bo Muggsy Spud Webb over you here. You know what I mean? Or, yeah. uh, or, like, the world's fastest man. I would want to be the world's fastest man. I think then, that would just be boring. Where there's, like, there's more, like— when you're the world fastest, world you get fastest to do it once, man, once every four years, <laughs> right? You get to yeah, run nine yeah. seconds every, yeah. you know, and you you do a lot of training for that. Where baseball, you play 162 games. Yeah, you know, there's offense and defense, and you play both sides. You just imagine like dunking over, like uh, Dwight Howard. I think basketball, you know? <laughs> basketball is so much fun. It, I, I didn't get into it. I never played it organized. I have a basketball hoop in here now, you know, obviously. 50 shots a day. We take 50 shots a day. Me and my kids Nothing play a lot. That. I tell them, I'm like, you guys can play basketball if you want. We're not going to put a lot of energy into it. You're, you'll be lucky to hit 5-4. So. <laughs> but uh, we can play in the backyard all you yeah. want. <laughs> but basketball is a lot of fun. I do love basketball. I love football too. I love, I love all sports. There's, just, there's not too many sports I'm like, oh man, I just don't like that sport. But I think if I had to pick being an athlete and when I think it would be a baseball player, I just— those the daily grind, both fielding and hitting. I love. It's a little less. I, li I wish there was some sort of contact in the sport. I do. W I would miss that. I think. I loved rugby. I thought rugby was awesome because of the contact of the sport and it was continuous. Right. 
So that was that was really fun. Never played football besides street football. Yeah. Um, I think football would be fun too. I just uh, I think yeah, if I had to, if I had to pick just one, it would probably be baseball or wrestling. I did love wrestling, but wrestling just is you know you like go to the professional. Yeah, yeah, WWE. <laughs> you know what I mean. <laughs> I don't know what my I don't know champion. what my signature move would be, but uh, uh yeah, I don't know, man. Yeah, something, yeah, you know, something cool, something awesome. But yeah, I mean, there's just so many sports out there. I just love all of them. I love playing all of them, and I, and I mean, besides the fact that you don't play wrestling, but you know what I mean. You live it. You live wrestling, Dan Gable. That's right. <laughs> Come on, Russians. We <laughs> 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 just saw this video of Dan Gable. <laughs> Rubbing snow all over his body yeah. saying, come on, Russians. <laughs> that was awesome. <laughs> Gotta love Dan Gable. How about that other guy? Uh, he was a smaller one. And, and um, he's like walking around. like during, like He's a coach now. But he's like walking oh, the around. Brand, the Brands Brothers. Yeah. yeah. And he's like still picking fights with people. Yeah. I don't care how big you are. I'll yeah. knock you out. <laughs> yeah. it's oh, like, dude. dude. Terry and Tom's Brands. Those, yeah. those guys are maniacs. If you don't know who they are, they're the, they're the head and the assistant coaches of Iowa, University of Iowa, where they went. And then… Um, one of them went on to the Olympics. I don't think they both went to the Olympics, but they were just freaks and just super intense wrestlers. Very serious, very intense, uh, just phenomenal. And like they, uh, Flow Wrestling has some really cool documentaries on them. And so go check those out. Those are the Brands Brothers were, they were like, when I was wrestling in high school and college, I like, those were guys were my idols. Like you just, I love their intensity. I think most wrestlers just always ready to get just after. Just always, yeah. just like go. Like, that guy looking at me funny. Yeah, right? you're, like that guy's eighty years old, bro. bro. You're forty, bro. Yeah, <laughs> yeah you're, right. you're in your mid fifties, yeah, right. early your mid forties. You know, like <laughs> chill out. <Yeah. laughs> I think your your dog's eyeballing. Yeah. Me. <laughs> <laughs> do you use supplements? If so, what? I do use supplements. Um, I think that any athlete athlete's going to have to use them. Um, you just can't get all the nutrients you need out of, uh, out of food. And I think with the amount of, the amount of work that we have to put in, the amount of calories that we have to take in, it's really hard. It would be really hard to actually just eat enough food to cover it. And so, um, yes, the supplements I take are extreme endurance. They're phenomenal. They, they don't cut corners on the pr product quality. And that's one of my, one of the reasons why I use them. Um, they have this really great product uh, called Extreme Endurance, and it's basically like a lactic acid buffer. And they've done a ton of like double blind placebo tests to make sure that it actually works. And it's not just saying that it works because it does. So um, I use creatine. I think every, every athlete should be taking a creatine of some sort. Uh, Extreme Endurance has a creatine. It's a phenomenal product. I think the best creatine on the market, personally. Yeah, I wonder why you think that. <laughs> it's got his name on it. <laughs> but it's also good. No, it's good stuff. It man. is good. And then… Tasty. Uh, tasty. It is really tasty. Uh, I take… Um, I'll take their Fuel 5, which is a carb oh, uh, yeah. a this carb good. stuff. Yeah, like if I can't get in a uh, a meal and I need something, some sort of… Something just to put in my gut. Like, you know, they have a Fuel 5, which is really good. It's like… Uh, That's what you were having… Um, during the marathon row. Yeah, exactly. Like every 30, yeah. 40 minutes. Yeah, I'd have, I had like in the hydro. Three, I had like three, yep, in the hydro. So those are good yep. products. Uh, I'll actually, um, <clears throat> when I did the my 50K, yeah. I made like a, pretty much what I did was I took their their Fuel 5. So it's a, a carb supplement, mm -hmm. um, the hydro, and then some protein. And I just made like a giant bag of it. And every about 40 minutes, I just eat the powder. <laughs> there it is. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I wash it down, you know. Right. Got you washed I mean, it, yeah. And then I was fine throughout the whole right. thing, you know. I take fish oil. I take a ZMA, which is zinc, is zinc magnesium. Um, with a, I think typically zinc magnesium has a B6 in it with it. Uh, yeah. Really good for men. Men are typically, men, at, peop, men who work out are typically deficient in zinc. Uh, that's a, yeah, that's a good product. And then, I'm trying to think of anything else. I think that's it. Yeah, that's really it for me. I think important too is to realize like it is a supplement. Exactly. Right? So like, <clears throat> eat, eat good, right. you know, like and eat real food. Yes. You know, like. I eat mean, vegetables, green, leafy green yeah. vegetables. Like that's what people shy away from. Yeah. And that's where you get your, 
you know, your micronutrients that you need, that you don't really realize. Yes, you need to eat meat for protein. Uh, you know, I mean, some people don't think that, but I, I do. I think that you, you know, to get all of your BCAs and antioxidants and everything, I mean, having a good quality protein is, is priority, right? I mean, yeah, that's how you build definitely. muscle. Definitely. Uh, I think it would be pretty, pretty difficult to um, build muscle without I mean, we could animal go in, products, yeah, to be honest with you. I'm sure yeah. you. I mean, I'm sure you can. There's we, people we that do it. Yeah, we, we, yeah, yeah, right. Like, there's people out there that do the, yeah. uh, you know. Vegan or vegetarian ve- yeah. or whatever it is, but I just don't. Um, yeah, I'm not, yeah. It's not. It's not my style. I like meat. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. So red meat. Yeah, uh, but yeah, exactly. Like yeah, on supplementation, exactly. It is supplements. They are necessary. They are not wonder drugs. They are not gonna like make you all of a sudden get as strong as Mason here, or you know, as uh, fast not- as Usain Bolt. But <laughs> yeah. uh, you know, um, but they it's, it's a good thing to have in your nutrition for sure. If you are working out a ton. A lot of it's convenience too. You yeah. Know. Right. Exactly. Exactly. What do you think about the games in uh, Romus this year? No uh, audience. It'll be interesting to see if that happens. You know, I'm. Um, you know, I mean, California is a strict state when it comes to a lot of things, which is one of my least favorite parts about California. And with this, you know, COVID nineteen stuff, everything that's going on, like I don't know, like I don't know if it'll be if it'll, if it'll, it'll still be possible or not. I hope so. I hope it is. I, mean, I hope so for the athletes' sake. Like how much can we, how much can you limit private property though? It's on Dave's ranch. No, you're right. I mean, I don't know to be honest. Exactly. Like I mean, you know? it, it, it's going to be interesting to watch and see and see how it goes. Um, I hope it can go down. I hope for for the for the athlete's sake, and I think that it'll it'll be a really cool experience. It'll kind of be it'll be it'll be different because there will not be any spectators, and it will yeah. kind of feel like what happened in 2016 when they brought us to Aromas, right. and there was no spectators, and no one was cheering, and it was really quiet, really different. It was almost like you were in like it was a training right. workout and not a competition workout, but it was a competition workout. And so it had an interesting feeling. I actually enjoyed it. I thought it was cool because I really like having to push yourself where you can still hear your thoughts and not the crowd Mm -hmm. getting you all this adrenaline and everything. That's all you need. That's all you need is your thoughts, you and your thoughts. Let them get as loud as they want. Motivate by the sound of your own heartbeat. Exactly. You know? Listen to your breath. <laughs> I think that uh, it would open up some pretty cool. Um, I mean, it's all going to be outdoor events. Yeah. So whether that's like trail runs or like how they had that, hey, to bring the wall ball to the up the the top of the hill that time. Yep. Just some like, you know, just some work. You know, like right. m- maybe not so. Yeah. The st- it doesn't have to be like crowd pleasing. Right. Which don't get me wrong, like. A lot of those events are they're still great tests or whatever. But I mean, personally, I love doing workouts like that where you're just like grinding, you yeah. know. And I think that it might. Who knows? It'll be interesting. It'll be it'll be, it'll be really sense. interesting. Yeah. You're right. That's that'll be the one thing where it doesn't have to be a show anymore. Yeah. It can be a test. Yeah. And so they can really do whatever they want. Mm-hmm. And so it could be really. It could go. It it could be really cool. Um. Not, not as obviously not so much for the fans, but for the athletes. I think it's going to be really, for me being an athlete and prior athlete watching it, I think it'll be really awesome to see. I how bet it plays you they're out. not going to um, invite like every country and stuff. I don't think they'll be able how to. Many, I, th- I think you're still going to have well, travel restrictions. Yeah, there's that. But even if they, even if they, that was off, which I doubt is, that's just too many people. Yeah. Just have 40, for, there, 40 guys yeah, and 40 gals. There isn't going to be the capacity for that. And yeah, 40, 40 of, Male and female, and and probably just um, the open class. Is that what it's called? I don't know. But yeah, yeah, no, yeah, like no age group, no age groups. I bet they, they could technically still have age groups. It's just a lot of people there, man. Yeah, true. You know, it would be. It, it might be harder. Uh, I don't know. It'll be interesting to see what they do. You know, I don't know. I don't. I don't like, where are they all going to stay? Yeah, fact, <laughs> exactly. Tense. Right. Well, it's it's not like it's not in the middle of nowhere. 
I mean, yeah. it's, it's in Santa Cruz. Well, close to Santa Cruz. The hotels are open. Or San Jose area. I yeah. feel like they're going to try to make it as closed loop as possible. Uh, you might be right. You know? Yeah, I think I, I, it would make sense for them not to do the age group. Age groups, it would ma- make sense just to do the open, the individual male and female, and, and then yeah. the, in the teams. I mean, if you had 80 athletes, I wonder how, many, how much staff you would even need. I don't even know how many teams have qualified yet. I don't even know how many sanctionals had been, ha- have happened. Yeah, I don't think they'll do that. It would only be, I bet it would only be like 10, maybe. Teams? Yeah, because the teams only could qualify through the sanctional events. Yeah, man. And so I don't know how many sanctional events has happened for this year yet. It couldn't have been more than 10. Yeah. I, I mean, I know Mayhem qualified. Yeah, no, I, I yeah. I, I, I don't think know. both Mayhem. I think, I think it's the logistics of it are probably pretty tough to begin with. Yeah. So then to add teams and add Oh, you don't even that, think you don't even think they'll have teams though. No, you I think they'll think so. just be the individuals? Just the just the top. I don't I don't know. That's that would be, that would it, be I mean, like, what is it? it would, well, it would be weird to not have an affiliate cup. Yeah. It's not really it sucks. I mean, but it's like <clears throat> that's I mean, not, I think I think people, 10 teams though they could do it. I don't think people If it's are, just 10, you don't think they could, I mean, I, you've never been there. No, I know. You don't know. You have no idea. <laughs> no, no. Just pipe no, down. No, I, I just, I don't know if the Why juice are you still talking? is worth a squeeze for that, you know? Um, it's just so, because then they got to do more events. But, I, but they're going to have the time to do it. Like, at, if you, like, when you're at the CrossFit Games, you're not competing all day long. Yeah, but then that, that's just more staff that has to be there and, and. People will, people will volunteer wholeheartedly to do it. Yeah, Because there, there are just diehard <laughs> CrossFit fans that want to be there and want to be a part of it. And it's cool. It's awesome. Like that's the great part about CrossFit. There's so many people that just want to be a part of it and they're willing to work for just to be a part of it. You yeah. know, and that's, it's awesome. So I think that that's not an issue. I think that they can have, they'll have the crew there to, to handle it. Exactly. And I think that on, because it's only 10 teams, they could still have, do teams. Do you know how many acres he's got there? It's big. A hundred or so? I don't know. Yeah. It's on the side of a highway. In aromas, it's that doesn't narrow down the acres. No, not at all. <laughs> that doesn't answer your question whatsoever. I just just want to say something. Yeah, it's not the so, yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. So it's got to go. be at least fifty then. So there you go. <laughs> yeah, right. Next question. Hopefully it just happens. Yeah, you know? I agree. Yeah. Oh, here we go. Everyone's gonna watch it if it does. That's for sure. Yeah, th- that'll be interesting to see if they, if they can. Well, okay, if they can still show so it. They, I mean, that brings me back. So last time we talked about that, uh, the five hundred kilo deadlift. Well, now they've gotten to the point where they're going to stream that live on ESPN, right? Okay. So because but does, that, like, but does that make it a sanctioned event? Oh, well, regardless of that, it's still going to be on TV, which is right. cool, right? Yeah, exactly. And that's right what, now, that's what people need. That's what people need. Now, come August, I hope to God that we're not going to be sitting in our house in August, but. Yeah. Well, I mean, um, they're already starting to open things up. Yeah, I don't think we will. But I don't know how much sports going to be going on. Right, I agree. I think by August, to be honest, I bet I bet some sports are back. Yeah. I really do. I think that, I think baseball might be back. If in the capacity, the the whole like in Arizona, in like that little, its own isolation where there's no fans, but they're still playing games all day in Arizona. I think that would be a great idea. And I think it would be awesome. And people would love to watch it. Um, and the baseball would be on, they could stream more like TV so that's yeah. fine. Um, I think by August, I think we will be there. Yeah. And so, uh, but yeah. Just not going to the events maybe. Yeah, exactly. Which which is a bummer because I love, like who doesn't love going to baseball games? I know, man. I'm going to miss all the games this year. Yeah. Um, what else goes on in the summer besides some baseball? Well, you have NBA playoffs. You have hockey playoffs. You have. Um, uh, NBA playoffs are like, they should. They've are. They're like. They, they should like be. May, they should be it? like yeah. happening soon. Yeah. Um, and hockey, same thing. They're both at the end of the season, towards the end of the season. So did they? Did the NBA make their All Star break? Or oh yeah, yeah. they did. Mm-hmm. Yes. They were towards the back end of the season. I I don't know exactly where I was at. Like I'm not like March, a diehard yeah. NBA fan, but I know that they were on the back end of the the season. Right. And because a lot of people are saying they should just. Start the playoffs right when it comes back. Yeah, play like five games. Whatever, whatever the records. Yeah, whatever are. the records are. Like, yeah. play like maybe five games, like to get them back into shape, and then start the playoffs, which is not a bad idea. Yeah. I mean, it is what it is. It sucks that yeah, we're not going to get all the games, but they're just not going to be able to do that 
No. What are you going to push this season? Exactly. You it's know? either that or you cancel it. Right. <clears throat> you know? The weird thing is how, like, football. Right? Like, what's going to happen to football? NFL football? Yeah. Or well, Tom Brady's on the Bucs football. now, so. <laughs> and Gronk. <laughs> and Gronk. How about the, that? Uh, what ta- a, the Tampa Bay Patriots. What a turn of events, man. Like, it's just perfect, though, because Molly's from Tampa. That's true, yeah. So, yeah Mo- and Molly's Mason's wife, yeah. in case you don't know. And her. I'm from New England. Yeah. I'm from Connecticut, so. Yeah, so now you can cheer for him. You can cheer for him. NFC, I got an NFC team and, and an AFC, AFC team. There you go, man. You know? Good I've been you. a pretty big Bucks fan anyway. I can see it. It's Warren the shit Sapp. that Warren Sapp, Warren Sapp, Rondé Barber. Yeah, right? That's back with John Gruden. John Gruden was a coach, that was, yeah. They won the Super Bowl the year before. Oh, no. Was it the year before? Uh, I bet that was 2001 no, it was two, or two. two years before. It was 2002, I bet. Or three. Maybe it was the year after. Because Saints, or not Saints. Uh, the, I bet uh, it was 02. But the, the Rams were trying to repeat when the Patriots beat them, right? No, the Rams were 99. What year was was Patriots 01? 01. 01, 01. The Rams so, are 99? 99, yeah. Oh, so that means that the Bucks won in 2000 and the Rams went again in 01? I thought that they no, went back th- to back. I don't think the Bucks. I don't think the Bucks won in 2000. I want to say it was 02. So you think Look a year after the Patriots? Look it up. Be our… Be our uh, I'll get you. Yeah. I got you. Oh, it was Posh Spice, by the way. You were right. I know I'm right, man. Yeah. Uh, Bucks Super Bowl. That was here in Qualcomm. Really? It was in San Diego? Yeah. That was the last time anything's ever been decent in Qualcomm. That, that stadium should just get torn down. It is well, they are. garbage. SDSU is going to tear it down and put a 40,000 seat stadium there. Oh, good. And they're going to put uh, like more college stuff. So I wouldn't be surprised if nice. that's kind of… Um, yeah, it's right over here. 48 to 21. It says Las Vegas Raiders. It says they beat the Las Vegas Raiders. I know it was the Raiders, yeah. Why would they do that? That's silly. It was 2003. 2003. I knew it was, I knew it was, um, okay. I knew it was after because I thought it was 02 for, for some reason. But yeah. But that could have been the 02 season though. Would have been the 02 season. Yeah. If it was, yeah. does that have the date? Is that what you're saying 03? It just says 2003. Okay. Yeah. yeah. January 26, 2003. Yeah, 02 season. There you go. Yeah. So you got a new Bucks fan in here. Yeah, you know. Got to get to that stadium now. Yeah. I hear the Ray Stadium is not very nice, though. So. Yeah, I've never been to… It's uh, indoor. Yeah, that would make sense. It's in Florida. Yeah. During the summertime, it could get pretty miserable in there, I bet. God. Yeah. St. Louis could get miserable sometimes, so I can only imagine what Tampa would be. All right. What else you got there? Hardest part about knee surgery recovery? Good, that's a great question, and that comes from D Rock ninety eight. Probably me beating you at workouts. <laughs> <laughs> great story about that is Mason decided he wanted to start a, a tally on our wall here for workout. Who wins it? Oh, well, what, what were you? What was that like? Three okay. three months out. First of, of all, knee it wasn't Mason decided. That we should do this. It was it was a decision we, we, we made. We talked about like I wonder what the what the count is. Yeah, you know. Uh, you and know, then like, uh, you know, look, you can start a tally. It's three months after Josh had knee surgery. Uh, what am I on uh, the prices right now? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, right. And uh, yeah, and then we decided to start it up. I think Dom did actually. <laughs> but uh, old Dom, old Dom. Yeah, I mean, whatever. You but start, anyways, anyways, back to the hardest part about knee surgery recovery. Anyway, so he, yeah, so we started a tick mark here thing who who workouts won and lost over here. And so there's a J for me and M for Mason and a D for Dom. And uh, I still have the most, but it's definitely not as much as it used to be. Just Mason, de- Mason definitely has some victories over me. Um, got one today, but I wouldn't have counted it. That's just me. <laughs> But anyways, <clears throat> hardest part about knee surgery recovery is I think it's just having the, the like you just have to get over it, like where you've been, what you've done, and you almost have to start fresh a little bit, right? And understand that you were injured, you got, you got it fixed. Whatever it is that you got fixed is now fixed. And now you have to mentally be, I'm okay. Like my knee is okay. Or, you know, for me, it was my knee and my elbow. Like they're okay now. They're fixed. Like you can trust them. Um, 
it's a grind. It's a daily grind like that, which I'm completely okay with. I enjoy it. I don't mind that part of it. Uh, I can get, you know, hard sometimes where you're like, man, I just, you know, I, I knew where, you, you know, you, you can always remember where you were before, right? And, but you have to get past that. And I think that's hard for a lot of people. It's, and I'm not saying I'm the best at it either because sh- I've struggled with it too, where it's like, I used to be able to do this and now this is where I'm at. You have to be able to accept that, move on and keep moving forward and knowing that you're better and to get back to where you were or past that, you know, you have to let that go and you have to, and it, and it has to take time and you have to play this game of push, pull back push, pull back, push, pull back. Because if you just keep push, push, pushing, you could possibly re-injure whatever it is. And then all of that was now for nothing, right? Now you went through that whole surgery for nothing. So you have to let go of your pride and your ego. And you have to be able to have that, to find a progression to get to where you want to be and not to try to do it too fast. And that was, um, that's been the hardest part, I think, you know, I've had three knee surgeries. I've had an elbow surgery and every one of them is the same thing, right? It's like, it's just this, this game of, I want to push today. Okay. I, I felt, I feel a little bit weird pain in my knee that I shouldn't feel. I need to back off, you know, and that's kind of what your doctor will tell you is your, your pain is going to be what tells you when to push and when to back off. Right. And, and a good physical therapist. I, do, I wholeheartedly believe in physical therapists. I think that if you have an injury, of a, a serious injury, you should definitely find a good physical therapist and work with them because that's what they, their job is. Their job is to tell you how you need to find your, you know, your motor patterns again. You need to activate muscles again. You need to be stretching more. You, like, you know, all these different things. Nutrition has to be on point because you want to keep inflammation out because your body's natural response to injuries is inflammation. And so, right, you got to get that inflammation out of there. And there's so many different ways to do that. Um, it's just, it's just a lot. It's a lot of work coming back from an injury. Uh, but it doesn't, it's, it doesn't have to be the end. You're the one that decides if it's the end or not. So there's a lot, a lot of different aspects of it, but letting go of that ego and realizing you're fixed now and find that progression. Don't get ahead of yourself. Uh, find a good PT and you'll get past that surgery. I think too, for you, uh, <clears throat> what seemed to work well is like, you'd be like, oh, that's the most I've squatted since surgery. Yeah. You know, so it's like you got this like control alt delete, you right. know, after your surgery. And so now you you can make PRs essentially. Exactly. You know, like post op PR, whatever you want to call it. Yeah, right. But then also like something you gotta remember is like even if you're healthy, you still have shitty days. Fact. You know, it's like you can come in here and and really you're like you don't even feel like you're bad that day, but then you just underperform, right. you know. And the surgery is just going to, like, times that by whatever. You know, yeah. It's going to make it even worse. Like, the, the ebbs and flows and ups and downs are going to be much higher and much lower after that. Agreed. So, like, just just take into account that, like, hey, even if I was healthy, it doesn't mean yeah. that I'm going to be crushing this every day <clears throat> anyway. Nope. So. And I think the more you stretch, the more… You know, the more you're conscious of your nutrition, the more conscious you are of how, like, actually, like, feeling your body as an athlete and understanding it and not overdoing it in certain instances. You know, like, obviously, when you're typically overtrained or you're pushing past certain certain limits that you really shouldn't be pushing past, that's typically when you get injured. For me, I had a freak accident, right? Someone fell on my knee. It's not a, it is what it is. But, like, there's ways to prevent injuries, Right. And so if you yeah. can mitigate that as much as possible, then that's what you have to do. You can't just keep grinding, 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 grinding. That's where CrossFitters get into trouble because they they look on social media and they see what everyone else is doing. They're always, there's always something to be working on in CrossFit, right? You can always be doing something else. And so that's where it gets tough and your body can just start to get run down. And that's when you typically see injuries. And so understanding that it's okay to take rest days as well can really help that. Rest days. Yeah. I mean, I, I, I had a big issue with it and, you know, it's, I mean, like, I think that the best way and and you are, you and I are similar to this is like, you make that decision early and you stick to it early in the day. You're like, okay, I ain't doing shit today. Right. You know, because it's those days where you have the time and you're still pushing your training. And then, you know, 
eventually it's like four or five in the afternoon. Yeah. And you're like, uh, yeah, maybe I just won't do anything. But then you like, you mentally, you wasted that whole day. Right. Because you're, you're just thinking, oh, I need to train. I need to train. Where if you get up in the morning and you're like, I ain't doing shit today. Right. It's a lot more enjoyable. Exactly. And then you just get in the ice bath. And you just get in the ice bath. You know? Or the sauna. One of the two. Or, or do the little both, you know? Do both. Back and forth. Yeah. <laughs> nice. We'll do, we'll do one more question. We're almost at an hour. I got to tell you my Reese's story. Oh, yeah. We'll do that. <laughs> we'll do that at the end. We'll, we'll close it out with that. <clears throat> uh, best tips for mental strength? I think they're… That's a good question. That's coming from Jimmy Jam Win. Nagayan, which is when. Yeah. Um, Vietnamese, I believe. Somewhat, yeah, I think so. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah. So, best tips for mental strength. Some of the best things I got when, <clears throat> when we were going through uh, BUDS, which is ba- basic underwater demolition seal training, that's your intro to, to becoming a seal, <clears throat> is um, no one can stop time and no one can make you quit. Right? So, if you can get that in your head, what I mean by no one can stop time is no matter what you're dealing with, no matter how hard something is in your life, whether it be in an eight minute or, you know, a 20 minute workout, whether it be um, issues at the, in home, at, 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 the, at your house, like with your family, with whatever it is, like anything in life doesn't have to be fitness related. Anything in life, whatever it is that's, that you're, that it is like weighing on you, that's bogging you down, that's going to, that is going to end. And you're going to be on the other side of it at some point. And if you can realize that, it makes, it makes life, it makes things easier, right? Knowing that it's going to come to an end. It's that unknown, like when you don't, when you can't figure that out, when you can't realize like this is going to come to an end, this is going to stop. Whatever pain I'm suffering right now is going to stop. Like when you can't f- see that, the light at the end of the tunnel, that's when it can get the darkest. And that's when people really start to struggle in whatever it is or aspect. And so we had this great mentor who walked in and said, none of these instructors can stop time. So no matter how bad it sucks, no matter how how, how bad you're hurting, they can't stop time. So that's going to come to an end. If you quit during that time, you know, then it's going to come to an end a lot quicker, but the outcome is going to be a lot worse for you. So um, that was, uh, that for me has been probably the biggest piece of mental advice that I ever got was no one can stop time and no one can force you to quit. It's your decision. And so if you can realize that, you know, no matter how bad it's hurting, no matter how bad it sucks, whatever it is, it's going to come to an end. And whether you quit or don't quit, like that's what you have to face at the back end of that. And so that's my advice for, I guess, for uh, mental toughness, mental strength. So, yeah. Great question. That's all the qu- time we have for questions today. We do need to listen to this Reese's Pieces story. <laughs> it's not that big of a story. It's just kind of funny. So uh, yesterday, um, after the run, I had, uh, it was like a, you know, like the box. It almost looks like an M&M box of mm-hmm. Reese's Pieces. Yeah. I'm sitting there on, uh, on my chair and I'm just like kicking these things back, right? Not even, not even looking at it. Just because I'm going to eat the whole box. I made that decision like within the first Pretty early. piece. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and uh, as I'm as I'm kicking these things back, as I'm knuckling these Reese's, you know, <laughs> I look, I, there's like, I feel like a sugar ant on my chest, right? And I was like, whatever, I flick it off. And then I, like, there's another one on my arm. And then I'm like looking, and now I'm like getting the feeling of ants crawling all over me. And so I stop. And there's just these little tiny sugar ants. I look at my the, my hand holding the <clears> box, and it's completely covered in ants, <laughs> like swarming in ants. And I'm like, oh shit! And Molly uh, is sitting right next to me on the couch, and she's, I'm like, oh man, ants must have gotten to these Reese's. She's like, why do you think that? She looks at my hand, <laughs> and she's covered in Reese's pieces. And I, so, and I probably ate two thirds of the box by yeah. this time. So I ate a good amount of ants, I'm sure. Delicious. So I wiped off the. Box and then I eat the rest of them. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. Of course you one. did. Yeah, right. Of course you did. Yeah. That's awesome. <laughs> Good thing is sugar ants don't bite. So and I do and love sweet. I do love Reese's pieces as well. It so I would have probably done the exact same thing. It was worth thing. it. <laughs> worth it. Completely. Worth She's it. like, "How are you so calm? You you're covered in ants." I'm like, "Ah, they're just ants. They're just ants. Could honey. be worse. Yeah. Could be like bees or wasp or <laughs> yeah, right. something terrible. Or any ant that bites you. Right. right. 
Awesome. Well, that's podcast number two. Hope you guys enjoyed that. Um, thanks, Mason, for for being here again. Oh yeah. And um, like I said, he'll probably be uh, you know a regular co-host here if we got a third mic. And so when we have other people on, you won't just hear us too. Jack and Jaws over here. Jaw jacking. Yeah, jacking. So thanks again. Subscribe if you guys want to, uh, you know, hear, get get a uh, notification for a podcast when they're starting to come on and um, give me some ideas of some guests you guys would like to see. That'd be great. You could throw them on my Instagram or on YouTube. Or, uh, Tim, actually, t- or Mason, tell them where, uh, where people can find you. Oh, yeah. I'm on Instagram at uh, Flynn M underscore. Is that it? That's the only place? That's currently the only place. In my YouTube channel, if you want to. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I'm on your YouTube. <laughs> and you can and you can find me here now. Yeah, here, here. And on this podcast now. Yep. So, yeah. Awesome. Well, that's it. Don't forget to pay the man. <laughs>